Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over some pretty common issues that come up when establishing these one-to-many relationships amongst multiple tables. And the way I really want to demonstrate this to you is I'm just going to do a, I'm going to try to get, uh, see how much I can get done in six minutes here, and then I'll uh, throw out another video if necessary. I just want to make a bunch of little databases, and I'm going to use actually one database file, but I'm going to make multiple sets of tables. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. But I do want to kind of go through this kind of fast, and I want you to do this for yourself because this repetition is going to make it easier and easier and easier. Now, if you've got some database theory experience, you've taken a database theory class, then this concept is certainly going to be um, much easier. But if you're working on access and you don't have a lot of database background, then that's where this is really going to be of value because it's going to be important stuff when you're establishing your fields and ultimately your primary keys versus foreign key relationships. So I'm going to go ahead and start off super simple here and I'm going to head over to create and I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, table and let me jump over to design view. My first table here, I'll just go ahead and call this um, Actually, I don't even need to be in design view for this. I can be in data sheet view. But I'll go ahead and call this uh, students. In fact, let me go and capitalize these. Uppercase them. So here's my students table. And I'm going to have a student ID and a student name text. So when you're practicing uh, table relationships, I would throw in one or two realistic fields, but don't go hog wild thinking you got to go and get everything down there. Let's just want to focus on student ID and student name for my students table. I'm going to go ahead and create another table here. And let's see, I will call this one, um, let's see, jump over here, oops. I'm going to go ahead and call this one uh, class ID. And then we will have over here, this one can be, come on, let's do a uh, text field and we'll just call this one uh, class title. Click OK, jump over to design view, just kind of look things over. These will be classes. Excellent. So that looks pretty normal. Class ID is the primary key on the students table. Student ID is the primary key. And of course we can see that in data sheet view also. Um, class ID, if I go to my fields ribbon here, it's, um, oh, there's fields ribbon. It's my unique field or primary key. It's a little bit weird to look at it that way. Let me go ahead and close these. So I've got these two tables, right? Um, yes, I'll save all changes. But the problem I've got is one student can take many classes and one class can certainly be taken by many students. You're not going to have a class with just one student, so you're going to have multiple students. So this is a many-to-many -many relationship, so let's resolve that with how do we keep track of a student's grade, for instance. A student's grade is not relying just on the student, it's not relying just on the class. A grade is relying on the combination of the student versus the class. So. I'm going to create another table. I'm going to jump over and just do this in design view. And I'll just go ahead and call this uh, grades. And I will have a uh, grade ID. Auto number is fine. Student ID, number, text ID. Ah, text ID, what am I thinking of here? Class ID, number. Now, I'm picking number fields for very specific reason, because my classes table, the class ID was an auto number, and my students table, the student ID was an auto number. So I'm using auto number for these ID fields in their classes and students tables, but on the grades table, student ID and class ID are foreign keys. Now I wouldn't do an auto number here because the data needs to match up, so I'll use a regular number field. And this is an important concept and an easy one to, to mess up when you're new to access databases. So now that I've got these set up, certainly save changes if and when prompted. Database tools, relationships, I'll bring in all three tables. And my grades table's in the middle, that's where I like it. Student ID to student ID, enforce, create, class ID to class ID, enforce, create. So this is how your database would look 
if in a very simple school database where we're just keeping track of some students and we're keeping track of classes and then we're keeping track of where those grades would show up. Now our grades table would have other fields certainly. Not only would we want the student ID and the class ID which are essential, those are the foreign keys which lead to the primary keys for the other tables, but we'd also want to know the uh, the date of the grade and stuff like that because what happens if one student takes the same class twice? Well, the second time they take it the grade should override the first so we would also want to have the date it was taken and things like that. Um, so this is a really basic but we take we took what was a many-to-many -many relationship and we result have resolved it down to two one-to-many relationships. Let's try this again. I'm gonna do the second one a little bit faster though. Uh, yes, I'll save those changes. And I'm gonna go ahead and just create a couple quick tables here. And we'll go to design view. Let's go ahead and create um, ooh, books and authors. Okay, so bear with me on this one. So I'm gonna have a books table. And I'm gonna have a uh, book ID, auto number, and book title, text. Okay, that's pretty good. And then I'm gonna create another table. This is going to be authors. Click OK. And I'm going to have an author ID as an auto, auto number. Author name as text. And I'm thinking, OK, what's the big deal here? I'm going to close these, save when prompted. Yes. Well, in this situation, books and authors one book can have many authors. Certainly you've read a book and very likely it was a college textbook um, where multiple authors were used and certainly one author can write many books. Um, now I have a book here on my desk it's uh, the Kickstarter handbook Real Crowd Funding Sources and it simply has one author listed. Hold on a second. I've got another book over here by my desk, Morocco's JavaScript and jQuery. It has two authors, Zach Ruvalkaba and Mike Murak. Okay, so this one book has multiple authors, and I know for a fact that Mike Murak has written multiple books. So that's a many-to-many -many relationship that needs to be resolved. So I will do that with create table. And I'll just jump to design view and I'm going to call this, if I don't have a good name for the junction table, I usually just use the titles of the two tables mixed together like that, books authors. And this will have a course, a course, it's going to have a book author ID, auto number, and then I'm going to have the book ID text, uh, nope, I need to use number for that one. And then I will also have author ID which is also a number. Okay so let me go ahead and uh, save that, close that, database tools, relationships and I'm gonna bring in show table I'll bring in my authors, books, books authors, close and let me kinda position these so they're down here. Book ID to book ID, enforce and create, author ID to author ID enforce and create. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stop here but I'm gonna come back to this in another video because I want to spend a little bit more time explaining these little details and why this is the way it is.